Blessings and Shalom. What a wonderful morning it is. This, of course, being the continuation of the day that began yesterday or last evening at sundown. Yahweh is faithful and His mercies endure forever. It's a joy to be able to share with you yet again this moment in the morning. And I'm continuing to encourage the saints about being or not being overwhelmed. As I realize by Yahweh's Spirit that so many of you are facing this plight. It is even greater encouraging and more encouraging to me to have persons reach out to say that these few mornings have meant so much to them uh, in that they were indeed overwhelmed and needed to hear that which Yahweh had to say. So that is always an encouragement to me and a blessing to know that I'm faithful to Him and that I follow His leading. Shalom to all of you. Welcome to the broadcast. Shalom. Blessings. Shalom. It's a glorious day. It's a wonderful moment to be alive and be in the presence of our Father, to be with His people. Because we're always in His presence, by the way. Some people, oh, we, we go to the church building and say it's good to be in the presence of God. No, you're always in His presence. You're never out of His presence. We are always in His presence. But it's a joy to be able to share with you uh, this morning. Shalom. So let's talk about this matter about matter of do not be overwhelmed. Do not be yourself. Now today is going to be an unlearning session for many of you. But you'll benefit from it, I promise you. You have to be prepared to Listen to Yahweh's word. It's so good to see you, Sister Cecil. Listen to Yahweh's word. Listen to Yahweh's word. Not to what you think, not to what you feel, not to what somebody had told you. Listen to Yahweh's word. If it is not found in the word, as I use a Latin term, solo scriptura. If it's not found, solo means only scriptura, scripture. Scripture alone. If it's not found in Yahweh's word, then you have no right living by it. Do not be overwhelmed. Today I'm here to tell you, thank you for sharing, Sister Natalie. Do not be yourself. Hear me carefully. Do not be yourself. I am not misspeaking. I'm saying exactly what I want to say to you. Do not be yourself. One of the worst bits of advice and church preaching you've ever heard was about being yourself. Don't do it. And I'll tell you from scripture why you shouldn't. We've often heard people <clears throat> we've often heard people say that you should be yourself, you should be yourself, and, 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 and there's this this mantra in the church. Oh you should be yourself. Says who? That's the first thing you need to ask. Which scripture said that you should be yourself? You let me give you some help now. Zero. Zero. That's made puppy. There is no scripture that speaks to being yourself. None. I repeat, there is absolutely no scripture that instructs a saint to be himself or herself. None. No scripture tells you to be yourself. So the question then has to come, where did it come from? Who generated this talk about being yourself. You need to know it, because if you don't know where it came from, you'll swear that Yahweh said it. And many persons are busy trying to be themselves that they forget who they should really be like. The scripture instructs you, one, let me give you the first text, you ought to put on Messiah, put on Christ. Messiah is the Hebrew term that I prefer to use. Put on Messiah. Where in that do you hear yourself? Are you Messiah? No. You are not to put on you. You are to put on Messiah Yeshua. Why is that so critical, church? It's critical because... Shalom, um, Sharon. Good to see you. Good mo um, morning, Roxanne. It's critical because if you don't understand who you're supposed to be like, then you're going to begin to boast in self, which is the most deadly thing to do as a believer. Ruach HaKadosh did not come into your life. The Spirit of Yahweh is not given to make you 
Be yourself. Ah, good, Sister Pedalin, Mom. Good to see you all. The Spirit of Yahweh is given to make you reflect Yeshua, the Messiah, not yourself. Truth be told, Galatians 5 tells you that the Spirit of Messiah, of, of Messiah gives you, Yahweh's Spirit gives you self-control. You hear what he does? Ruach HaKadosh puts self under control so that Messiah can be seen. Bless you, my sister Cecile. It's a joy to see we receiving correction already. And that's a sign of a true saint. I know the true saints after this broadcast for, for real now. Ruach HaKadosh, Yahweh gave us his spirit. And the fruit, a part of the fruit of Ruach HaKadosh is self-control. Now we preach this all the time. Galatians 5, we preach it and we scream about it. Yes, the spirit gives us self-control. What is self-control though? You put self under control. Why? Because being yourself is dangerous to being like Messiah. Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you, which was in Messiah. What did, what did Proverbs say through Shlomo? As a man thinks in his heart, in his mind, in his life, so is he. So if your mind is Messiah's mind, then your actions will be Messiah's actions. It's that simple. But if you're thinking about being yourself, where's room for Messiah? We are not supposed to be ourselves because who we are was not good enough for salvation. Don't forget that. While you we were busy being ourselves, you we were lost. I hope you remember that. While we were being ourselves, you we were lost we were destined for destruction in the context of, of, of what the preacher says. We were, we were enemies of Yahweh's. That's a better way to put it. We were against Yahweh's work when we were being ourselves. When we were being ourselves, we did not know him. So how could you now be saved and still be yourself? Shalom, Sister Michelle. Good to see you. I long to see you all on Sunday. I can't wait. The trouble comes... When you begin to say, okay, so should I be like him? Should I be like her? Let me give you the second point then. Scripture also says through the Apostle Shaul, and this is very, very careful, critical here. He said, follow me as I follow Messiah. He said, mimic me. Be imitators. Mimic. That's where the word came from. Mimic me as I mimic Messiah. So do you realize now that you are supposed to be like Yeshua, Eileen, good to see you, my sister. Blessings. But also you're supposed to mimic the true apostles of Yeshua who were sent to teach you. Very important. You are, we, the apostles, are supposed to, Shalom, are supposed to reflect Yeshua before you. And as we live the example of Yeshua before the saints, the saints in turn follow our example and in essence, they end up looking like Yeshua. Do you get the point? Do you get it? If you therefore cannot find genuine apostles in the earth, in your, in, in, around you, who would you follow? That's why the gifts are given to the body. Shaul said, follow me, the apostle, as I follow Yeshua, the Messiah. We, the apostles, are supposed to be such an example before the saints that you are able to look at our lives and understand what the life of the Messiah was really like. The Messiah, Yeshua, his life, the scripture describes him as a man of sorrow, acquainted with much grief. He wasn't a happy-go-lucky person. So when you see persons bombarding me, for example, Nigel London, and saying all kinds of ill things about me, it's a good thing. Why? Because Yeshua said so. The, the servant cannot be greater than the master, neither can the student be greater than his teacher. If they spoke ill about him, Yeshua said, they'll speak ill about you too, my disciples. He said, if they called me your master Beelzebub or the prince of demons, what do you think they'll call you? He said, if they call me a devil, what will they call you? So if you find an apostle that the whole city loves and he's just, oh, everybody says he's a nice man, don't follow him. Never follow an apostle who's not persecuted. Because that is not Messiah you're following. For you to follow Yeshua, the Messiah, the person will be despised by many. But they could never 
prove him wrong in his speaking. They could never show him from scripture where he's wrong. That's a sign of a genuine person that you should follow. And I'm not saying this for you to follow me in any way. Because those of you who know that you've been sent by Yeshua to follow my example, you know who you are, you, know, you do it with excellence. But I'm giving you the principle from Scripture. No saint in the Scripture was ever told to be themselves or follow themselves. The two examples you have before you. One, put on Messiah, follow him. Two, follow me, said Shaul, as I follow Messiah. You have no scriptural foundation for self Because Shaul said in him was no good thing found. And persons are overwhelmed because in many cases I've discovered being yourself is not even who you want to be. Some of you know when you hear the truth that who you are in reference to what you've just heard is not right. But all your life you've been boasting about being yourself. So what do I do now? Because I know that I have to change. But I'm also told by Oprah Winfrey and all these different preachers that I have to be myself. So um, what do I do now? Because this is not who I ought to be. And if you listen carefully to some persons who say, well, I am myself, you can hear the human arrogance in it. Good to see you, Trish. You can hear the human arrogance, the edge of, well, nobody could make me be different. You are supposed to change by the power of Yahweh, by the power of His Spirit. If ever you remain yourself throughout what you claim to be, a walk with Yahweh, you're lost. Don't you sing? Don't we sing songs? Oh, I, I'm, I'm changed in his presence. What does that mean? You can't be changed and still be the same person. Apostle Larry, good to see you. Blessings and shalom. When Yeshua came from the mount of after dealing with Hasatan, was the first thing he said. Repent. Change your mind. Why? Because I told you, Philippians 2 said it. If you have the mind of Messiah, you're different. Proverbs, it said, as a man thinks in his mind, so is he. If your mind is different in Messiah, Yeshua, of course, your behavior becomes different. You begin to reflect the nature of Messiah in your everyday walk. But it cannot happen if you, if you remain in a shell called self. Change. Repent. Turn from being that which you were never called to be, which is self-centered. If, if your conversation, if your manner of speaking is not like Messiah, change it. And Messiah was never a wimp. So don't think I'm coming on a pretty little soft egg attitude here. Messiah was tough enough to say it as it is. That's who you're supposed to be. Some people... Good morning, Bianca. Good to see you. Some persons are so caught up in trying to be nice that they forget to be like Messiah. Yeshua, the Messiah, was not a nice person. He was a holy person. And he is, as a matter of fact. I'm talking was in terms of when he walked the earth. Yeshua was never in the flesh when he walked the earth a nice person. He was holy. He was true. He was upright. He wasn't soft and nice. Which is why, even after being complimented by people, he rebuked them. Don't forget that. Even after, for example, with, 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 with uh, Kepha. Kepha said, you are Messiah. The son of the living God, Elohim. Yeah, great. Sounds good. He said, man, flesh and blood didn't give you this revelation. That's a compliment. It was revealed to you by, by, good to see you, Moshe. It was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. Wow, wonderful. But you know the next thing Yeshua told him a few days after that? Get behind me, Hasatan. For you came more about the things of the world. Do you see, do you see that? After Kepha was complimented, he was rebuked. In being yourself, you do not have to be a nice, wonderful, 
soft person. Be like Messiah. Neither do you have to be crude unnecessarily. Be like Messiah. Be being meek doesn't mean that you're soft and you're stupid. It simply means, you, or gentle, it means you know when to do what. Messiah was not nice and sweet in the face of sin. You should not be. Messiah was not tolerant of hypocrisy. And this is where it's going to get a little tricky for some people, but you'll get it if you, if you listen by the Spirit. Yeshua is entirely, and Yahweh is against hypocrisy. Critical. So you say, well, if I'm not myself, then I'm being a hypocrite. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because hypocrisy doesn't speak to your being like Messiah. It speaks to your announcing that you are something that you're not. Important. If you are being like Messiah, you would never be a hypocrite. Because the person that you were is dead. You now become like Messiah. Shaul said, I live, yet not I, but Messiah lives in me. If Messiah lives in you, then the old you is dead. If any man be in Messiah, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all become new. Why? Because the old you is supposed to be dead. You put to death the deeds of the flesh daily. You mortify the old man. You, you put him under subjection every day. So you have no room for hypocrisy if you are being like Messiah. Hypocrisy occurs when you are not being like Messiah, but you announce that you are something. Messiah was not a hypocrite. Let me give you hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when you try to be nice, when you know that you're not. If your thoughts towards me are mean, but your words towards me are nice, you're a hypocrite. And that's what we have a lot of people around. Oh, Apostle, you're such a man of God. I like how you teach on Facebook, but then you hate when I, when I address sodomites. So what are you? Oh, bless you, you're such a great man of God. I love the way you preach. But when I speak against sin, why does he have to talk like that? You're a hypocrite. You cannot love me but hate what I say. Oh, they tell you, sis, my sister, I just, I just like being around you. But then in their mind they're saying, I just can't stand how this girl is. That's a hypocrite. They say... What sounds godly so that you can consider them to be righteous, but their thoughts are ungodly. That's hypocrisy. And you should not be a hypocrite. If you don't like me, say I don't like you. I respect people like that hands down. But in the church, as we call it, there are too many people who are being encouraged to be. I have heard preachers from the from the go to see sister Al, from the from the pulpit saying, "Be yourself. Don't be like anybody else. Be yourself." I've said it in my lifetime too, but I've I've repented of it because I wouldn't say it anymore ever. We should not tell anyone to be themselves. Be like Messiah. But how do you get there? You follow his apostles' example. So if there are apostles around you, called apostles, and they are selfish, you're in trouble because you're going to follow a selfish example. If there are apostles around you who claim to be apostles and they are weak, you're in trouble because you follow a weak example. You are supposed to follow somebody who looks like the Messiah you've read about, who speaks like the Messiah you've read about, who stands against wickedness like the Messiah you've read about. If you cannot do that, you are following an erroneous person who is fake. In Yerushalayim, in the temple, in the public, Yeshua cried out against sin. How do you have apostles and prophets and prophetesses and whoever it is and their followers 
being against me who publicly by demonstration cry out against sin. What are you dealing with? They are busy being themselves. They're busy being who they like, which is themselves. They're not busy being Yeshua in the earth in terms of their behavior. If you follow a genuine apostle, he will do what Yeshua did. Yeshua was in the temple, which is a public environment. He was shouting against Yeshua's behavior. He said, y'all don't know me. That's why he told him, you of your father has a son. Where did he say it in private room? No, he said it in public. He had no issue telling them in public they were wicked. He said, had you known Avram, you would not fight me. That's a public protest of their behavior. But the apostle and his wife... And the bishop and his, and, and his wife are against us going to the public against homosexuality and against wickedness. So who example are they following? Whose example? They're busy being themselves, which is people who love to avoid persecution and ridicule. Don't be overwhelmed being busy with making yourself better. The truth is, you and me, we are supposed to be dead to self. So we cannot be what we're dead to. If we are dead to selfishness, to self-centered living, we can't be alive to it still. Scripture says in Romans 6, how could we who are dead to sin be alive still. You cannot be dead to something and still be alive to it. If you die to self daily, you cannot be yourself daily. If you want to be yourself, some of you, you'll never forgive people because they hurt you too much and they hurt self too much. See, they hurt you, which is self. And because they hurt you so much, you have a difficulty forgiving them. But you learn, you master forgiveness when you fail to be yourself, when, when you, when you, when you destroy self. Because once you, once you kill self, people can hurt you. <laughs> I hope you get that. Once self is dead, who are they hurting? That's why Yeshua said, whatever they do to the least of these, my brothers, they do to him or to me. Why did he say that? Once they do some, once self is dead and they do anything to you, they're not doing it to you. I hope you get that. And I hope people understand how to handle some of you saints on this broadcast. If people understand, husbands and wives understand how to deal with this matter, they'll be very different. If you are dead to self and you are alive to Messiah, anybody who comes to you and does foolishness, who do you think they're doing it to? So it's easy to forgive when self is dead. Because... You have a difficulty forgiving once you're still in self. That's why people get, people, people are flustered. Preachers who hate me, I'm telling you all the truth. People, preachers who can't stand me, they're upset. Why are they mad? Because they're saying it. Nothing they do bothers me. I still laugh. I still do what I have to do. Still tell them they're wicked and still move on. Because they don't bother me. Why? Nigel is dead. The old man is finished. Now, the old guy would have already gone to church and dealt with them publicly. But they don't bother me. So when people come in the broadcast and say, Oh, you're wicked, you're evil. I don't like who you are. It doesn't bother me. I simply respond to them from scripture. Or expose their wickedness and move on. My life is not about me. It's about Yeshua. If you are dead to self, you could never have an issue forgiving people. I just helped you all one time already. You have a problem forgiving because you are alive to you. And they hurt you. Well, what about Messiah? And some people are more upset when people hurt them than when people hurt the truth or affect or fight the truth. It tells you where you are now and you need to repent if you have to. Some persons are mad. Oh, you couldn't talk to me like, to me. You hear yourself in that? Like that. Oh, but you could talk to Yahweh anyhow. When you could tell Yahweh, you'll call your son what you want and it doesn't bother you. But when they touch you, it's a problem. That is not good, my brothers and my sisters. You are not supposed to live like that. If you are dead to self, then people can't bother you to that extent. But if you are alive to Messiah, then whenever they say something against Messiah, you have a problem. So what did Yehuda say? He said you must 
contend, earnestly contend for the faith that was given to you. Why? Because you are alive in the truth now. And when you are alive in the truth, nobody must come and fool around with the truth you've been given. I pray you get this. If you're dead to self, they could talk to self. They could call self whatever they want. They could call you a dog. They could call you a fool. They could call you stupid. They could say that you're an idiot, you're ugly, whatever it is. That doesn't bother you because you are not contending for self. But when you are alive in Messiah now, you earnestly contend for the faith, not for self. So why does Nigel London respond to people so much when they speak erroneously from the scriptures? Because that is what I'm alive to. I'm alive to Yahweh. I'm alive to Yahweh's word. I'm alive in Yahweh. So when you fool around with Yahweh's word, we can have a problem. Tell me what you want about me. It doesn't bother me. But when you touch Yahweh's word and try to pervert it, preachers, I will expose you publicly. Because that is what I'm alive to. If you saints are alive to Yahweh's word, let them talk what they want to talk about you. Oh, he raped me 10 years ago. Exactly. And I'm not trying to be insensitive here. I'm just telling you the truth. He raped you. That's dead. Die to it. Move on and live in Yeshua. Because if you don't do that, he said, unless you forgive, you will not be forgiven. But forgiveness becomes difficult when self is still alive. So if the people are telling you, the preachers tell you, be yourself, be yourself, and you're busy trying to be yourself, then you'll hold on to the things that once hurt you. And that is why so many of you are overwhelmed, because you're still carrying you around. And everything that hurts you, you are dealing with it. That is not how you walk in Yeshua. Whatever was done to you, move on. Because at the end of the day, you don't count in reference to who you ought to be. I do not count in reference to who I ought to be. What matters is, do we have Yeshua? Are we wearing Yeshua? Are we walking in the image of the Messiah? If the answer is no, then you have a problem. I close with this. It makes no sense perfecting self while you lose sight of who you ought to be. It makes no sense perfecting self while you lose sight of whom you ought to be. You ought not be yourself. You ought to be Yeshua. By example, image of Yeshua. Yahweh's word said that we are being confirmed, which is to be chiseled like a sculptor. Chiseled into the image of Messiah, not self. You have been chosen to be confirmed to the likeness of the image of Yeshua the Messiah. Not your image, not my image. <laughs> Good to see you, Pastor Mel. Does that mean you should not speak of hurt? Yes, you can speak of hurt, uh, Sister Pedal, but to help people. The only time you must repeat the things that hurt you should be when you are going to benefit someone else. In other words, if someone else would have gone through what you've been through, you can highlight to them, well, I've been through this, but look at me now. It is not that you are echoing your hurt to please self. You're speaking of what you've been through to help somebody else. I hope I made that clear. Do you forgive the person if they act? Yes, you should. Forgiving the person has nothing to do with them asking for it. It has everything to do with your being commanded to do it. And forgiveness does not speak to being or buddy and bosom friends with anybody. Forgiveness simply means you've released the person of the wrong they've done so that you can free yourself and you move on. You do not return to a destructive person because you forgive them. Some of you women need to hear that. If a man has hurt you, and continue to hurt you. You walked away from the relationship. He says please forgive me. Or he doesn't even say forgive me. Release him. Forgive him and move on. If he comes back to you to say forgive me. It doesn't mean you return to him. Unless he changes his behavior. 
you never return to a person who continues to hurt you because they ask you to forgive them. The truth is, only a genuine person can ask you to forgive them indeed. I hope somebody is getting this this morning. Only a genuine person can really ask you to forgive them. Many hypocrites ask for forgiveness not because they want you to forgive them. They just, don't, they just want to have access to your life again. So they don't have to ask you to forgive. There are many people who do wrong to me and I don't, I don't even bother them with them. I move on and that's it. That's good, Trisha. Good question. Does forgiveness need to be announced? No. I know people like to get on broadcasts or get on Facebook. I forgive you. I'm sorry. You text the person. I forgive you. You did wrong to me 10 years ago. I forgive you. No, you don't have to do that. Because forgiveness is more about your action than it is about your speech. Forgiveness is something that you find from within you, not outside of you. It isn't something you have to announce. It's something that you live. If you have forgiven someone, then by nature, your behavior changes. In essence, you don't carry that hurt anymore. You're free of it. You move on. That's it. Sure, Sister Pedal, that's fine. So nobody has to ask you to forgive them in order for you to do it. You do it because you're mature enough to understand that you don't carry around stuff. Why? Because dead people don't carry anything. <laughs> My God. Dead people do not carry things. They carried. So that's why Yeshua leads us. You, when you die, you don't choose which funeral you go to because you're dead. They could take which uh, funeral home you go to. They take you wherever they want to go. Now, some people make requests before they die and hope the family honors it. But you, you really don't have a choice in the matter. When you're dead, they take you wherever they want to take you. If you say, bury me here, they bury you 10 miles away from that. You can't change it because you're dead. When you're dead, you don't carry things. So dead people don't carry stuff. Bless you, Sister Al. Dead people do not carry things. So as long as you're dead to self, you don't carry things around anymore. Instead, You let it go. And you move forward. My hope and my prayer is that you have learned and I can see on the broadcast that some of you have received the correction and the instruction. I'm so, so, so glad about that. Amen. You are not supposed to be yourself. You're supposed to be like Yeshua the Messiah. That is the standard. How do you get there? Follow the apostles as they follow Yeshua. But with Yahweh's spirit inside of you, you will know when they're going wrong. Don't follow error. Ruach HaKadosh will never instruct you to follow error. Yahweh's Spirit will never instruct you to follow what's wrong. So don't tell me, but God sent you somewhere you can't leave. You, if ever the apostle or whoever it is doing wrong, leave them. You are not to follow what's wrong. Because Yahweh is going to judge you for it. I'm telling you this as a, as a caution. Be careful. If you are in a fellowship or church, whatever they call it, and you see the teaching is not right, and you know it's not right, leave. Because Yahweh will judge you for remaining in what's erroneous. You're not called to be yourself. You're called to be like Yeshua in the earth. Yahweh said again in his word, you were chosen in Yeshua the Messiah to be holy, not to be yourself. To be blameless, not to be yourself. Put on Messiah. Wear him. And watch how things around you will change. Because it will get hot in a minute. But if you're wearing Messiah, it doesn't bother you. Shalom. Blessings. Love to you all. Do well. Bye-bye.